Hello and welcome to another episode of Modular in a Week. We have come to day 11 and this day is supposed to be about controls and inputs. And we start with this episode, as you might have guessed, with the guitar. Uh, so we're going to get the guitar into the modular. I'm still not a good uh, guitar player at all, uh, but I'm a big fan of Robert Rich and the way he uses a slide on his guitar to uh, really make some wonderful soundscapes with guitar and modular and synthesizers and all that. And my hope is that uh, I can get some of that feeling at, at least. Probably not though. Um, so we're gonna do that with another one of Bartom Musical Circuits designs. Uh, so if you, from the last episode, I said that you should go and look at his yellow page at all the marvelous uh, modules that he's made. And maybe in that list you did find this one the BMC30 guitar input. So I've already built this uh, a while back uh, and this is what we're going to go through today. So I'll show you uh, where we where you can find the information about this or buy it if you want to do that um, and how to build it and what it what you can do with this. All I can show you all the things I have found that you can do with this. It's a really interesting module for many things. But before we do that I'd like to say thank you to my patrons who support all this work that I do and makes it possible for me to do all these videos. So thank you guys for that and anyone who's not a supporter yet you can of course become one and you get some more rambling videos over on Patreon some other interesting uh, behind the scenes stuff and things like that. But anyway, let's go and see how we can build this and try it out in the modular. The circuit we're going to build today is made by Michael Barton of Barton Musical Circuits or BMC for short. And if you go to his site bartonmusicalcircuits.com and press the DIY link there uh, I showed this in the last episode as well. There's loads of really interesting modules here and some that doesn't require a, a microcontroller is open source and you can just download the documentation and build it yourself or if you want to have some help on the way uh, you can buy the boards and the PIC. Uh, so for all his usually boards and picks are in stock. So we are going down to BMC 030, the guitar input. And if we go there, so this is the guitar input. He has his own little video there and you can buy a board for $8. So reasonable priced as well, I think. If we look at this PDF file, that is the documentation. And his documentation is very nice. First he explains all that it does. So yeah, you can all pause and read this or just download the documentation. The only thing that I skipped in this circuit is the return uh, section. Uh, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. So the outputs is the important thing here. You get the amplified audio output, you get the envelope output, you get the gate output, and you get the square output. Um, and the return, again, I skipped. So it's very interesting and uh, you can do loads of interesting stuff uh, and get loads of stuff out of this module, which I also will show in a minute. Down here is the schematics and preamplifier. So here's the preamp. You have the input for the guitar or microphone or whatever, and you can choose how much gain you want. 
which then goes into the square wave output uh, and here's the envelope and gate uh, so here from this signal you create a square wave output which does sound a lot like a really digital distortion uh, and here you get a gate output for when you press or strum the keys no strum the strings and also an envelope that is controlled by how hard you strum the keys as you can see here this the return send section is all by itself and basically what it is it's an attenuator between the input and the output and I really didn't understand that one so I skipped that one it's on my panel though so didn't do much there and then he explains everything how it functions uh, and all the parts that you need so there's not that many parts either two ICs and two uh, diodes and an LED for semiconductors and then a bunch of resistors and capacitors loads of panel components though and this is his design so let's look at the panel in Inkscape as usual you have the guitar input and the gain knob and the amplified output this section is still there but I didn't populate it and then you have the LED for the gate uh, and that's the sensitivity of the gate and envelope you have the gate output, envelope output and the square output and this is what it looks like in real life and you can also see that on the back side that this circuit on the board isn't that complicated uh, quite straightforward and uh, and then as I said just loads of jacks and pots all right, so we have now put it in the rack. I have connected the guitar to the guitar input and we have it in its most simple way with just the amplified output into the mixer. Uh, so now we should be able to play the guitar. Right, nothing fun with that. What well, we've done a guitar amplifier, but the thing is, like first of all, we can take the this, and we can take that into a filter, and this is low pass. We can't hear anything really. Uh, let's. use something so now we have it through the uh, M MS20 OTA filter And this is fun. This is awesome. We can use our whole modular to just filter the guitar. Very nice. But here's an, here's one of the really nifty things with this. Because out of this we get a gate and an envelope. An envelope you say? Yes, an envelope. So if we take the envelope out and then that into the CV you get this.
So it opens the filter when you play hard. The harder you get, the higher the envelope becomes. And that opens the filter, in this case. We could, of course, uh, we could take this and use that on, let's take this one. Nice sounding oscillator and play along with this. Alright, so that's interesting. Let's uh, let's split this signal. I want that and the uh, and the CV here actually. many chords if you haven't figured that out already all right so now we have that maybe we should actually take the we should actually take both the synth and the guitar through the filter why not <laughs> So we have a very spacey sound now. Uh, okay, let's continue. We have a gate output as well. And here we have a gate sensitivity actually. So we can see how, how sensitive that should be. What could we do with the gate? We could trigger some drums. So I've all right, we're back after a faulty cable, which messed things up here. Uh, so, we, where were we? We were with the gate. Uh, so we add gate output of the uh, guitar input. And here we have, we have the sensitivity here. And we can do that, we add that to a a drum, the DS7, so now we should get even more stuff going on. Wonderful. Last thing of the puzzle. I don't know if this is going to fit with all the rest, but the, the, the next thing we have is a square output. Actually, this one, what I've tried so far, it doesn't work in, a, in this kind of way. It works better if you just do one tone at a time, but simply what it is, is a square output. which is a lot distorted. But it doesn't sound as good at chords. So now 
we do all this with this one module that we do all this crazy stuff with. Um, but uh, I talked about Robert Rich, so we need to get a slide as well. So let's go and make one of those. So if we want to sound like or play like or whatever like Robert Rich, we need a slide. Uh, so here's a copper tubing that I had lying around and here's a tool to cut th this kind of tubing um, which makes this so much easier and so it should sit on the finger uh, from from the this knuckle uh, and the length of the finger so I have lots of tube to spare so we can just try a few things so let's start with this and you just do this until you are all the way through just tighten a bit every now and then And there we have our slide. So fits like that. Now we can try that out. Just beware so you don't cut yourself. All right, so here's the slide I quickly built. Uh, so I'm gonna hold it on this finger. Let's see, I, have, I haven't done this before. You're supposed to be very light on your hand. Maybe we should remove the square and just have the rumbling other noise. And you should have it over each fret. Ah, there we are. should actually I've read online I <laughs> it's one of those typical things read online and then you try to do it in practice uh, these fingers back here should uh, dampen the strings on this side I think don't take my word for it <laughs> And then also there should be a special tuning on the guitar, which I haven't done. You should have an open chord on the guitar, which I don't have. Uh, so. For some really interesting effects. Final thing, let's uh, connect the effects just to see how spaced out Robert Rich kind we can make this. We have some deep reverb on now.
Okay, it doesn't sound anything like him, of course. It does sound very fun in many ways, but not like him at all. Uh, let's uh, blame it that he usually he has an Ebo as well, so let's blame it on that. One, two, one, two. Uh, it works with a microphone as well. And you see here, uh, when I talk really loud, I open the filter more. And when I talk lower, we close the filter and then I disappear. So it's uh, really nice that way as well. Uh, if we, we can add the square output. And we do that, and this is distor distortion big time. Uh, so this is probably what any death metal band would like. Wow. Or something. Good to know it works with a microphone as well. So that's it for this episode. I've been wanting to do this module for so long. I think this is an amazing module, even though I can't play, but uh, just to get other instruments into the modular, uh, amplify it well enough to work with all this, and even get gates and envelopes out and a strange square uh, distortion kind of thing, or whatever that is. It's really nice to have it all anyway. And the modular. So I hope you build this uh, e, and if you have a guitar or something else that you can try to plug in there uh, or else uh, we are just get a um, speaker and use that as a microphone and amplify that just to get something in. Um, that's interesting, we should try that. Anyway Thanks for watching, uh, I hope you are subscribing and let me know in the comments what you think of this uh, and I'll see you in the next episode for more inputs and controls. Take care, bye. <sighs>